back to living 757. Hey, now, Patricia, as the world reopens, okay, there will be many of us who will remain cautious about catching COVID, of course. But even if we're out and about, Patricia, how do we stay safe when encountering wildlife? Well, to help us out with that, we have licensed wildlife control officer and science public school teacher, John Penn, uh, Spence, to join us today. Welcome to the show, John. Hey, thanks for having me. <laughs> no problem. Oh, wow. I see you already got a little buddy, a little sneaky buddy there with you in your yeah. <laughs> I'm so scary and I'm in my house. Oh, my God. <laughs> wow. Well, yep. John, now I'm a city guy, okay? I'm a city guy to the heart. So for people who are just like me regarding snakes, what is the most common species of snake that people encounter and why? Well, it depends on the time of the year, but early in the spring, we get our, what we call our early emergers, which are our smaller uh, snakes, uh, northern brown snakes, ringneck snakes, eastern worm snakes, and those tend to be the ones we see er earliest in the uh, spring. And then our larger snakes, our eastern rat snake, uh, northern black racer, king snakes, uh, and also our northern copperhead and our, uh, eastern codmouth animals also we start seeing as the weather gets warmer. Oh, yes. Well, yeah. I'm glad that I'm in my house today. You know, I have to be in the studio with you. <laughs> um, and this this I'm snake here, this is uh, this is an Eastern King snake. So we, his name is the kids at school like to refer to him as Elvis, the King snake. But uh, oh another, another one of our very very common snakes, non venomous snakes that we have here in Virginia that residents are starting to see. Okay, got you. I know you mentioned that uh, you have them in the school, and I was asking him <laughs> before we came alive uh, here on, on the air if the kids get mad at the snake sometimes. Like, oh, the snake gets mad at the kids. I was like, oh my gosh. Um, we have some pictures to share with the audience, sure. uh, Sean. Can you help us to identify them? Like, uh, what yeah. kind is that one? All right, so this one's a northern black racer. It's one of the two black colored snakes that we most commonly see in southeastern Virginia. Um, okay. Uh, so this is a northern black racer. It's non-venomous. Okay. Okay, we have more. Yeah. Ooh. All right, so this this is probably one of our most beautiful snakes in Virginia. This is a northern copperhead, which is venomous. Um, uh, this one is easily identified uh, by, obviously, the thickness and color of its head, but it also, we, we like to usually say that they have a khaki body with tobacco-colored mm -hmm. Hershey kiss shapes. It bottom. is a beautiful color. It yeah. is. Uh, this is this is the second one. This is of our black colored snakes here. This is a eastern rat snake, or formerly called a black rat snake. Um, difference between Ooh. this one and, and the first one. This one, as you notice, has a lot of white on its under its chin and its belly. It also has remnant white flecking patterns uh, through its body. Sometimes that is a remnant pattern when it was a juvenile. Oh, wow. wow. Well, wow, yeah, let's see. Let's see one more if there's another one. Whoa. All right. So this one, this one is a brown water snake. We have uh, two common species of non-venomous harmless water snakes. This one is a brown water snake. The other one is we have is a northern water snake. And these are most commonly mistaken for a eastern cottonmouth or water moxin, which is venomous, uh, which in that snake occurs, uh, you know, not so much on the peninsula. Uh, uh, this one here is another picture of a northern copperhead. Yeah, again, venomous. Um, again, venomous, but uh, it's not an animal that's aggressive. Right. Um, <laughs> but it's it's also an animal that harmless snakes are misidentified by and, and are killed unnecessarily because people think that they're a copperhead. Right now, now, now to piggyback on that, if mm -hmm. if someone comes across a snake either in the home or just on the property, uh, and you know to to prevent them from killing it uh, by mistake. How can people remove or relocate? Is that where you come in? Well, we yes, and our company does removals from property. Uh, we've been we do removals from inside crawl spaces, inside garages, and we have had to take some from inside the house. Um, the the biggest way is is to avoid interactions, to make sure you keep garage doors closed, make sure that your windows are closed, because right now, especially the black colored mm -hmm. species of snakes. Um, they're, they're looking really, the only time they end up in a home is because they're trying to get out of the sun. Right. And yeah. so they see a garage that's open. They're just trying to get some shade and get out of there. Okay. Unless, of course, that somebody in the garage has bird seed and it's attracting mice, which is its prey. But 
The easiest way if, if a homeowner encounters a snake is just to get a large trash can, turn it over, and just taking a broom. Oh, because the, that's a good idea. Because the broom provides a, a, a safety distance between you and the animal. Okay. Sweep, it, sweep it into the trash can, turn it up, put the lid on it. All right. Um, do you keep them when you go to the houses? Do you keep them, the snake? No. Well, Virginia law requires us to either, with the permission of the, of the homeowner, to release them on the property. Uh, or to translocate them to another location that is a suitable habitat for that particular animal. Oh, wow. most, most residents don't want us to, to relocate them on the property, unfortunately. Okay. But. Right. Well, <laughs> we showed your, uh, your contact information there at the bottom of the screen. We certainly thank you, John, for stopping by and uh, giving us a little education on our slithering. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Uh,